Hello, this is Dr. Anthony Delmond. Today we're going to talk about the marketing mix, and we're going to talk about it in the context of agriculture. This is one of the key concepts in sales, and you'll hear oftentimes about the four P's of marketing. We're going to add one, uh, but we'll again talk about it in an agricultural context. So the five P's of marketing in our presentation here are going to be product, price, place, promotion, and people. And we'll go through each one of those in detail independently. The things you should know by the end of this lecture, obviously, you should be able to explain the components of the marketing mix, the five Ps. I should be able to talk about features, advantages, and benefits of a product. You should be able to explain how prices filter through the supply chain, how money is added uh, and value is added to products. Uh, you should be able to illustrate how the distribution of a product affects its marketability. Uh, that's something we'll go through in some detail when we get to the distribution section. And then you should be able to talk about uh, the key elements of product promotion. The marketing mix in general involves areas where marketing decisions can impact the desirability of a product. So it's areas where a business can work to make its product seem more marketable to consumers. Traditionally, there were four P's of marketing. Uh, we're going to add one more, but the four original ones were product, price, place, which we could also call distribution, and promotion. And that's, uh, we'll get into that, it's going to be advertising, public relations, and, and selling. And the last one we're going to add is people. So to sell products, businesses have to satisfy multiple consumers or customers uh, throughout a complex value chain. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the value chain before. That's the supply chain, but this is more in the context of how money is added to products, how value is added to products as they go through the supply chain. So there's a manufacturer, and then there are other entities along the way before the product gets to the end users. Those could be, uh, for example, processors, wholesalers, retailers, uh, anyone else that comes between the manufacturer of a product, maybe a farmer, and the end user, who would be either a customer, a household, or an industrial user. Every value chain member, uh, we'll call them nodes here, uh, within a supply chain, represents a unique buyer-seller relationship. So every one of these steps is going to require a salesperson to get uh, the product from one to the other. So the manufacturer to that next node, that's going to require somebody selling the product to that next node. If that is a processor, somebody is selling the product to the processor and the processor is buying. So every one of those lines in between uh, represents a sale, essentially. So the first component of the agricultural marketing mix is product. A product is any good or service that a business can sell to its customers. I mentioned the terms good and services, goods and services. Uh, those are different. So a good traditionally is something that is tangible, something you can touch, something physical. A service is something uh, that you would buy that isn't tangible, so not something you could touch. An example of a good would be a pair of scissors. A service would be a haircut. It's something you maybe need, but it's something someone has to perform for you. An augmented product is a complete product, and it's distinguished from competitors' similar offerings. So this might be uh, a product with a warranty bought at a certain location. So it's the full product altogether, and it's an experience of buying that product that you wouldn't get from a competitor. Let's get into the FABs. Uh, these are features, advantages, and benefits of a product. Salespeople tend to use features, advantages, and benefits as a uh, tool for selling products. So features come in a variety of forms. We can classify them in four, four broad categories. Those are function, design, quality, and experience. Uh, let's go through each one of those in some detail. So the physical attributes uh, of a product are function and design. Uh, function of the product is simply the task it's meant to perform. So if you're talking about a food product, it would be nourishment. 
Uh, if you're talking about a mower, it would be to cut grass. Uh, pretty simplistic. Uh, the design of a product, however, involves its attributes and how a user feels about them. So how maybe appealing something is to a specific user. Uh, so if we were talking about food, maybe uh, an apple that is nice and glossy or red. Uh, if you're talking about a tractor, maybe this is the, the cut, or maybe it's got a, an enclosed cab uh, that is nice and appealing to a customer. Again, these types of features are tangible. They're physical, so uh, they can be seen. And while people may have different views, uh, so they're subjective in how much they matter, uh, they're things that can be seen by everyone. Then we have the non-physical attributes. Uh, for example, the quality of a product, uh, this has some intangible value. Uh, maybe uh, it's unique. Maybe it is exclusive, um, something that only you have access to, uh, or something that is that has some prestige associated with it. Uh, so that's going to be the quality. Uh, and then uh, there's experience. So the last category of, of uh, feature is uh, the experience that someone has with it. This is very user specific. Some two, three, four people can try the same exact tractor, say, or Apple, and get a completely different experience out of it. So this is going to be very user-specific, and you can't really tailor uh, to, to uh, a larger group for this one. In addition to features, uh, a lot of salespeople will tie those to advantages and benefits to help them sell products. An advantage is something about the product that provides the customer uh, an improvement uh, over either not owning the product or buying an alternative. Uh, so uh, the advantage of having a mower is that you're able to cut your grass faster than if you cut it with scissors. Um, the advantage of having an apple is that uh, you're going to have more access to nutrients. Uh, the benefit is how those features and advantages uh, affect the potential owner, the buyer of the product. So this is where you're going to use uh, the feature, say uh, an apple has uh, nutrients in it, those nutrients are going to make you healthier, and the benefit is that you will have to see the doctor less. Um, if you're talking about a riding lawnmower, uh, you're going to speed up your uh, you're going to you're going to speed up your lawn care, uh, and you're going to have more time. So the benefit is that you have more free time. Uh, so always, when you're selling, you want to focus on linking the features and advantages to the benefits to specific individuals. Now, uh, looking at the Cosmic Crisp Apple example uh, that I talked about in the book, um, here are four of the features and uh, some examples of each. Uh, so for uh, the functions of an apple, it's a food source, it's a nutrition source, a fiber source. Uh, some design features, it's red, large, uh, hard, or soft. Um, the quality uh, is that it's new to the market, so something that is maybe less tangible, uh, but it matters because it conveys that it has some some feature that's useful to the to the buyer. Uh, so non-GMO, maybe that's important to some people, um, has a long shelf life, it's late ripening. ripening. Um, these are all qualities of the product that aren't necessarily tied to its function or its design uh, or the experience that you'd have. But then there's also experience where uh, this is what you're going to actually get out of it. Uh, it's crunchy, it's sweet, it's juicy. Everybody might have a different reaction to those experiences, uh, but those are the experiences that that product will provide. Um, and I could walk through an advantage would be that the apple's healthy, a healthy way to satisfy hunger, and a benefit uh, is that it reduces your healthcare spending. So the benefit is that you're spending less money. Always a benefit. I would say the, ma the majority of benefits tie to either spending less money or having more time. Another part of pro the product is branding. Uh, branding is a way that businesses can set themselves apart uh, or their products apart from their competitors. So one of the goals of branding is to reduce the amount of time and energy it takes uh, 
buyers to find the right products. Uh, if you have a list of 100 types of tires you can get um, and you need new tires for your car, uh, having heard a lot about one tire company is going to make your search costs lower because you're going to have that in the back of your mind as a good source to go to. Uh, so branding is really important, pushing the uh, the company, information about the company. Uh, it also relates to reputation, uh, but it's not exactly the same thing. So we're going to talk about it here as branding. Uh, there's a couple types of branding. There's actually more than this, but the ones we want to focus on are individual and family branding. Uh, individual branding is where you are branding a specific product uh, and really putting all your energy into building the product self's brand. Family or umbrella branding, this is where you're taking maybe the company or a product line and trying to build around that. Uh, so for example, uh, if you were uh, selling cars and you were focusing on only, uh, maybe you were selling Subarus and you were only focusing on the Subaru Forester, uh, that would be uh, an attempt to individually brand the Subaru Forester as a high quality vehicle. Uh, if you were doing umbrella branding, maybe you're going to focus on their line of uh, crossovers and SUVs. Uh, so maybe you're going to focus on that as your big branding initiative. Uh, there's probably a better way to describe this, but one is more specific and one is trying to tie uh, all of them together. The problem with, with uh, individual branding is that you're spending a lot of money and energy on one product and it doesn't necessarily affect your others. Uh, for the family branding, you might be spending a lot of money to get a lot of information out there about a lot of products, but if you have one of those products fail, it hurts the entire brand together. So there's risks associated with both. Though there's plenty more to talk about in terms of product, the last thing we want to focus on here uh, is packaging. Packaging is the first thing that people encounter when viewing or purchasing a product. So uh, it's a sort of a face forward piece of this. Um, some of the uh, main elements of packaging design are uh, packaging materials, uh, both of the product itself and anything that accompanies the product, uh, graphic design, uh, and uh, practicality. Uh, let's talk about each one of those. The packaging material, the physical packaging, packaging material, uh, may be uh, glass, maybe a plastic coating that comes over it. Sometimes we get very fancy things uh, with a lot of uh, materials that go into it. This might appeal to somebody's senses. Um, we all know the smell of a pair of new shoes, uh, or maybe the smell of a new book. Um, that can really uh, push somebody to want to purchase something. Uh, within the last few years, Coca-Cola decided to re-bottle their product in smaller containers and charge a little bit more, and they're still marketing that a few years out. Uh, so they're making money on this uh, packaging scheme. The graphic design uh, has to do with uh, the typography layout and imagery that are on uh, the packaging or the product itself. Uh, so it gives people a perception of the product. Uh, clearly you wouldn't want to have things that are misspelled, but a lot of time and energy goes into how a product looks from the outside. And uh, the graphic design, the content that's on there, is very, very important to uh, people's perception of that product's quality. And then lastly, the practicality. Um, one example is uh, recyclability. Uh, if a product is recyclable, uh, some people are more inclined to buy it. Uh, if it's got a function of its own, for example, I've got this picture here of a cereal box. When I was a kid, we used to go uh, every summer and stay uh, at a friend's house in the mountains, and rather than bring uh, our own dishes and everything, we would just uh, buy these nice little boxes of cereal that have perforated edges, and you could tear them open before milk right in there and uh, eat your cereal directly out of the box. They still make these. Uh, but uh, practicality is another uh, feature of packaging. All right, so we're going to stop right there, and we'll come back and talk about price in the next section of this lecture.